All right, guys, today we're going to be working on 11-1, simplifying radical expressions. Uh, we're going to be dealing with a lot of square roots in this problem. And like the title says, we're going to be simplifying them, not solving them. So it should be pretty easy to go ahead and do this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with our first problem. Remember, we are simplifying. So those are my only instructions for this problem is to simplify, not to solve. So my first problem is going to be the square root of 12. So the first step in breaking the square root of 12 down is breaking down the radicand. The radicand is the number inside the radical sign. So in this case, the radicand is 12. So I'm going to break it down into its prime factors. And in order to do that, I'm going to use an old friend called prime factorization. So I'm just going to split it off into factors and then split them down into even more factors until we have all the prime factors. So the prime factors of 12 are 2, 2, and 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer those over into the radical sign. 2 times 2 times 3, and that's 12. So I just broke it off into its prime factors. Now, what you want to look for here are prime factors that are the same. For example, here we have two 2's. So I'm going to go ahead and separate them from the 3 by writing them as the square root of 2, and since there's two of them, square. And I'm going to multiply that to the square root of 3. Now, as you learned in previous lessons, the square root sign, the radical sign, and the square sign are direct opposites of each other. So you should know that they cancel each other out. Uh, so when they cancel each other out, all you're left with on this side is your 2. And you're still going to multiply that by your square root of 3. Now, remember, you are not solving for the square root of 3. This is simply, to, it is simply asking you to simplify. So, uh, there's nothing else I can simplify here. Here's my answer. Uh, the reason this is my answer, and I want to make this very clear, is that 2 times the square root of 3 is going to give me what the square root of 12 equaled. So, all right, let's go ahead and do another problem. For this one, we're going to use the square root of 90. So once again, we're going to use prime factorization to find this. So the prime factorization of 90 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So as you can see, we have our threes. We have two threes, so we're going to split that apart from everything else. The square root of 3 squared times the square root of 2 times 5. So now that uh, we've done this already, you should know that the square root cancels out the square. So essentially, we're left with 3 over here, and we're going to multiply it by the square root of 2 times 5. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. And that gives us our answer. Okay, this problem looks a little different. For this one, it says find the square root of 3 times the square root of 15. We're still going to simplify it, uh, but as you can see, we have two square roots instead of just one, like in the last two problems we did. So uh, let's start with the square root of 3. Now, if we try to find the prime factorization of 3, all we're going to get is 3 because it's already a prime number. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that one down already because there's nothing else I can do to it. However, 15 I can use prime factorization to split that up into 3 and 5. So uh, 3 stays the same. 15 is going to split off into the square root of 3 and the square root of 5. So once again, we have two square roots of 3. So that's going to be the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 5. Remember that the square root cancels out the square. We're left with the 3 to the square root of 5. And that's my answer. Now, before we move on, we have to understand that when finding the principal square root of an expression containing variables, uh, we have to make sure that the result is not negative. And uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Let's take the example, uh, the square root of x squared. So we know that the square root and the square cancel each other out, so this eventually equals just plain x. So um, let's make x a positive number. Any positive number, I'm just going to choose 4. So in essence, I'm going to replace x with 4. So 4 squared is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. And 4 is equal to 4. So I have an answer right here that works because it's positive. Now let me show you why it can't be negative. Now let's go ahead and use a negative number. Uh, I'm going to use uh, negative 2. So I'm going to make x negative 2. 
which means negative 2 squared. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, positive 4. Um, and the square root of 4 is positive 2. Now, do you see where the problem is here? Uh, 2 is not equal to negative 2. You can't, this doesn't work because you cannot have your x be a negative. There is a simple way to solve this. And that is for every radical expression where the simplified exponent is odd, like in uh, the first, in the last problem we did, uh, you must use absolute value to ensure that it is positive, that it stays positive. So let's go ahead and go over this. Okay, so the square root of x squared, uh, we know that it's equal to x because the square root cancels out the square. So since this x is by itself, it's to the power of 1. Since 1 is an odd number, we're going to go ahead and use the absolute value sign. Only when the variable by itself is to an odd power. So let's go ahead and do the next one, which is square root of x to the third power. Now in here, we know we have a square. So I'm going to go ahead and separate it from uh, the square. So I'm going to have the x squared over here. And that leaves me with just one x over here. So we know that this x squared is going to turn into uh, x. And the square root of x is going to remain the same. So uh, here's my answer. Now, what this, why this one doesn't need absolute value signs is because the x is not by itself. It has the uh, square root of x next to it. So you don't need to put absolute value signs on this one. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one, uh, x to the power of 4. Now, once again, I know I have some squares in here, so let's go ahead and split them off. I have x squared, and what I'm left with, if I take that x squared out, is another x squared. So essentially, I'm left with x times x, which equals x squared. Now, for this one, this is the power is an even number, so I don't have to use absolute value. Let's try the square root of x to the fifth power. Uh, I have one x squared, uh, another x squared, and after that I have remaining uh, just one x. So uh, this x squared is x times x, and the square root of x is just the square root of x. So I have x squared to the square root of x. Once again, the power is uh, even, and even if it wasn't, it has the square root of x right next to it, so we're good there. Let's do this last one, uh, x to the sixth power. So for this one, we have uh, x squared. We have another x squared, that's four. And last one is the last x squared. So that's x times x times x which equals x to the third power. Now, this is an odd power. So in order for us to ensure that it's going to stay positive, with all odd powers that are by themselves, we need to add the absolute value signs. This is very important because if you do not do this on problems that we're going to be doing from now on, you will get it incorrect. So make sure that you notice when they have odd powers and they're by themselves. Now for this problem, it's asking us to simplify the square root of 40x to the 4th power, y to the 5th power, and z uh, cubed. So um, this is a pretty big problem, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed by it. We still use the same rules that we've learned in uh, the beginning of this lesson, uh, but now we're kind of going to have to split this problem up. Um, what I like to do and what I recommend that you do is split this problem up into smaller sections. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do them in these sections. First, I'm going to simplify the square root of 40. Then I'm going to simplify the square root of x to the fourth power. Then I'm going to simplify the square root of y to the fifth power. And then lastly, uh, simplify the square root of z uh, to the third power. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, the square root of 40. Now, 40 is a number, so we need to find its prime factorization. So uh, what we have here is the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Now, for this one, remember we have two 2's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and split that off from the other one. So it's going to be 2 squared 
times 2 times 5. Uh, remember that the square root of 2, uh, the square root and the square cancel each other out, so you're left with a 2. And you're going to multiply that by the square root of 2 times 5, which is the square root of 10. This is the simplified version. You don't really need the multiplication sign in there. However, I put it in there because it's part of a bigger problem and we're going to need it. So I'm going to go ahead and move this uh, part of my problem, which is my answer, up here so that I can continue to add to it with my other sections. So now let's move on to the square root of x to the fourth power. Now, as you can see, this is to the fourth power. So um, if I break it off into squares, then I can make sure that the square cancels out the square root and I'm left with whatever number or variable is in there. So I'm going to try to take away all the square roots from this. So for the first one, uh, I can already see that there's a square root in it. And uh, there is actually two square roots uh, of squares in here. So um, remember, the square root cancels the, two, uh, the square out. So we're left with x, and same thing over here, times x, and this gives us x squared. Now remember what we talked about in the last section when it comes to uh, absolute value and using absolute value when your exponent is uh, an odd number? Well, 2 is an even number, so I don't need to put absolute value here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over here with the rest of my problem. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put a multiplication sign here uh, because it will be all multiplied together at the end. So let's go ahead and do uh, y to the fifth power now. So y to the fifth power, remember I'm going to try to take squares out of it as much as I can. So I got the square root of y squared. There's three left, so the square root of y squared again. And the last one is the square root of y by itself. Now, for those of you that still don't understand how, why I'm doing this, uh, look over here and you can see that the square in the first one plus the square in the second one and the one over here equal to equal five when you add them together. So essentially, I'm splitting them off this way. And the reason I'm breaking them off into the squares is because squares can cancel out the square root. So for the first one, I'm left with y times y times the square root of y. So once again, this will give me y squared times the square root of y. Uh, that's my simplified version for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and move that one up here and move on to z. So for the last one, we have the square root of z to the third power or cube. So I have square root of z squared and the square root of z. So the square and the square root cancel each other out. I have z times the square root of z. Now, take a look at this z. See how it's by itself? Now, there's no exponent here, but there kind of is. There's an invisible exponent. And if there was an invisible exponent, it would be a 1. So since 1 is an odd number, and this is the only one in the whole problem that is by itself that has an odd exponent, we do need to put the absolute value signs on here. Now, if I didn't do that and just put this into my problem, into the rest of my problem up here without the absolute value signs, it would be incorrect. It's very important to understand that. Now, what we've made here is big, uh, a bigger problem. Now we have to go ahead and put it all together. So this is the way I do it, and hopefully you guys can uh, follow along with this and make sure you do it this way too. First, I'm going to take all my numbers and variables that do not have uh, square roots uh, on them, so that do not have the radical sign. So for example, the first one is this 2. Um, it does not have a radical sign on it. And the x squared does not, the y squared does not, the z does not. Those are the ones that don't. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those together first. And now what I have to do is multiply the rest of the square roots. So I have square root of 10 times the square root of y times the square root of z, which equals the square root of 10 y z. This is my answer. 